These days it's it's all about getting your car as low as you can to look as good as you can. And what's the best way and possibly the cheapest way to do that is getting budget coilovers. So I'm here to show you all what it was like to actually install these onto the car, some tips and tricks, and to see if it was actually worth getting these budget coilovers. Hello everyone, how are you all doing? It is a nice, nice day today because it's time to install some coilovers onto the SG1000. Now the current setup on the car is that it's got stock shocks with some, I'm pretty sure, spoon lowering springs. Now it's been on the car like that, God knows how long, but the car desperately needs an upgrade. And thank you to Max Rod for reaching out to me and basically saying, hey, how about we provide you some coilovers and you can install it onto your SG1000, create a video of how to install it as well as a little Little bit of a review of what the actual products are like so I yep yeah, I was I was more than happy to do that so I've got the coilovers here got the s2000 into the garage I've kind of prepped it so that I can at least start jacking it up nice and quickly without taking a long time I also didn't want to start the project if I was gonna have too much of a long night so yeah it's time to actually get the car up in the air jack all of the car up onto jack stands and then start basically tearing it all down so it's going to be something different. I know exactly what the car is like to drive at the moment, but it's going to be interesting to see what it's like to drive after the coilovers have been installed. I know the Maxedon rod coilovers, basically budget coilovers, but compared to really old premium shocks and um, lowering springs, well, they're going to be tired now. And in fact, even budget coilovers should technically be a lot better than that. So it's going to be interesting to see what the car is like. And the coilovers, you've got full opportunity to be able to customize the, the ride height as well as the dampening and stuff like that. And for the price, they're, they're so cheap. I'll put a link for Max Eden Rods down in the description below if you're looking to get some. I'm really excited. I really hope this goes well. I've done one thing which I wish I did for other projects as well in the past was I went to my local hardware shop and I bought some spare nut and bolts. Now, these are the nut and bolts that I have to take off and I have a strong feeling if there's too much rust then I'm gonna have a problem with them and last thing I want to do is have a problem with them and then get stuck working on the car so I'd rather get the replacements so I can just just plow through it all so the other things we've got going on right now is actually oh oh yes let's have a look at the coilovers Ugh. yeah they look pretty good so these are gonna be for the front they come with these brackets already on them and for the rears they come just like that so there you go, we've got everything that we need there from what I can see. This is going to be exciting, let's go. So everyone, I thought the best way to do this for me at the moment will be just doing the fronts first and then the rears. I thought I'd show you all the condition of the old shocks. As you can see, pretty worn out, pretty battered and really there's only a few bolts that we need to take off. So for the front, we've got the one nut and bolt just here, well actually it's just one bolt that goes all the way through. The nut is part of the shark. Then I have to take the nut and bolt off on the top of the wishbone, and then the two bolts that hold that hold the shock up at the top. Once we've got all of that off and all the extra ancillaries around the front, I want to basically measure what the shocks are like already, and then lower it all down so so right now i'm going to spend some time actually wd 40 everything making sure it's all so well lubricated then i'm going to try and apply some heat through a heat gun because my gas canister is out of gas so i can't really use that so let's let's jump back into this wd 40 everything good news everyone i have a nice little update i've been um working oh kicking everything over i've been working on this side and yeah it's actually all come off i thought that everything would be seriously rusted on but it actually hasn't been so um i just wanted to basically go through a couple of things on this side that i've done uh, which i'm going to look at doing on the other side for your benefit basically so first up old shark as you can see completely battered so um, yeah so a couple of the things that i've done is well you've got the the 12 mil holding the brake line onto the shark and then you got everything else is basically 17s and then you got two 14 mil bolts just at the top here the the good thing about removing these two at the top is that once you remove them it allows you to pull the whole thing forward um, and then you kind of 
move the coil over out this way but you don't want to leave this hanging it's going to be bad for the lower ball joint so you kind of slide it back in when you're not doing anything there the the main bolt the large one in the center the bottom that one was hard work to remove now what i had to do with that was in essence heat it with a heat gun as well as using the impact gun um and then it worked well with each other the main trick that i want to tell everyone is a little bit of a removal and then push it back in and then out some more in out in um it just allows any dirt and stuff like that to not get caught up in one area at the same time it allows you to kind of give the thread some time to work in um, and move and the other thing that i like to do is constantly apply wd-40 so even when you push it back out just you know spray as much as you can back in there it just helps i'm telling you all it just helps gotta say it's a blessing to have all these tools at my disposal it's, um, it's going a lot easier than it has gone for me in the past when doing such work so yeah now i'm actually gonna just find the replacement one of this get the other one to kind of have a look at them next to each other you know i think you guys would like to see the old versus new so here is old versus new um i've kind of been preparing how high i want this now the main difference here is the fact that this is what the coil looks like with it in its current condition um, but without any compression now coilovers tend to stick a little bit um, firmer and don't flux as much so even though it looks pretty similar and i'm going to lift this one up a little bit more um, as you can see there's a bit of a high difference over there fingers crossed this should be okay i gotta get the both fronts looking basically the same the other thing i'm going to do is apply wd um not wd-40 I'm gonna apply copper grease to all of this um, just to kind of keep everything happy. Don't really mess around with the preload, so don't really mess around with the top two just there. Just make sure that they're tight, but the bottom one is the one for the height, so we can just rotate it up and down as we need. It was a little bit more difficult. I had to remove the drop link going on here. Maybe the other side, um, some form of the bushings might be a little bit weaker. It was just easier to take out, but Got the driver's side out as well. Actually, once once I knew exactly what to do, this side was a lot easier in the sense of time scales. Just heat, heat is your number one friend right now. So heating everything up, especially the lower one. Heating up the lower bolt, really important. Obviously, WD-40 and those kind of things, but heating up the lower bolt for the, uh, for the old shock made a big difference. So got this side out, put the other one back in, and then I'm basically all done for this side. No way. I'm basically done for the front. Then I can lower the car back down actually and check the ride height. So great news everyone, as you can see, the car is up and, well actually, it's technically down on the wood slants. I've put another one underneath just in case I made it too low and it'd be annoying to get the jack underneath. So another good little tip, I guess is the best way to put it. Now, yeah, the fronts actually went on surprisingly well. Um, I, I, I guess it's just a Honda way. Uh, they, they seem to always work even though they're really annoying at times and with rust and stuff but you still manage to get through to them and get the job done. So yeah, the, the coilovers are on. Um, this is the adjustment point. I think we can adjust them later on but I'm not going to do that right now. Yeah, so good stuff with the front. As I mentioned earlier with the front passenger side, I did have to take off the drop link. It's important to have jack basically to push the things back up if you're working on your own. Even if you have someone else, it's still better to have a jack um, to kind of lift any suspension parts you need to for the alignment. Um, I've, I've actually surprisingly been able to get it near enough to the ride height that I wanted it. So just a little bit higher than what it was before, but not exactly a huge amount. Um, I'm happy with that. So. It's, it's just a, you know, because the car's running on 16s and it's quite a low car as it is, it always kept catching on everything. So this is good. Now I can take the car back out and turn it around and bring in the rear next. The one good thing that I will say about doing the suspension on this car is the bolts that you remove, especially with the top wishbone, um, I was kind of thinking, oh, I'm gonna need to get alignment done. It's gonna be crazily out. I don't think you will um, because I've kind of made the car back to the same height it was and with the the control arm I mean with the wishbone going back there's only one hole for it to go through so everything's kind of it has to go back exactly to where it was which is good if you are lowering a car that was on stock suspension then yeah you're gonna need to get alignment done but it shouldn't be drastically out I'm really happy let's get the car out and let's turn it around 
bring it in the other way. Oh, actually, I just realized with the wood being the way they are, I need to jack it up so I can take the wood out so I can then drive the car. Oh, man. Damn it. Actually, a point that I didn't mention before is on the front of the car, just underneath the engine block, there is a section where you can use as a front jacking point. I'll put a picture for all the jacking points basically on the car now. And yeah, so you could jack the front of the car up on that point so you can put the front axle stands on. And there's also the rear diff point, which you can use to jack up the full rear. So that's what I'm gonna use for doing the rear. So everyone, um, I've basically got the car jacked up in the air and got the rear trim out that I need to to access the, the shock bolts. So two over there and two over here. So with regards to this side, it is quite tricky. Um, there's a couple of things you can do to make your life a little bit easier. Remove the three 8 mil bolts that go over here. Um, that will give you a little bit easier access to maneuver this pipe around which will then allow you to get better access to the two 14 mil bolts underneath here. You can get to the first one with like a, one of those joints and then the written one is a bit harder, but, but basically once you've kind of pushed this a little bit more this way, um, so this whole filler pipe and stuff, you can get the 14 mil to fit onto it nicely and then basically get this to fit on. The, the hard part will be putting the, the new bolts back in um, so you probably will need a magnet and stuff and in all fairness I wish I did this part like with regards to removing it with the car still on the ground um, So that would be my bit of advice, but yeah um, Let's I just gotta carry on with it now. Let's go Good news everyone I've managed to get the driver's side rear one out that was pretty Pretty challenging. Um, it took a while purely because you have to kind of push down on this with your foot at the same time take it out. You probably could get away with it better, but if you have a second person here, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm as usual working on my own. So yeah, that was a bit interesting, but got it out. Fingers crossed it won't be as difficult to put the new coilovers in, but one way to find out. Um, feels like there's more space in there now that the shock is out. And yeah, I think I gotta do the other side now. I got the, the top bolts out. Just gotta take off the bottom one. It's it's really challenging. Didn't work with the impact gun, so then I had to use just the long breaker bar and a hell of a lot of pure muscle power. <laughs> this side's gonna be a bit more challenging, I, I expect, but we'll so now. The, the bolt, this, this bolt at the bottom here is hard, hard work. It's so tight, so... Um, yeah, hell of a lot of heat, a uh, lot of lubricant, and just pure muscle power. That's what I'm gonna try to do now. The heat gun set up in a way where it automatically apply heat to the the threaded part of the bolt. Because let's face it, this part is all thin and hollow. That's the important part over there. So fingers crossed that idea works. Let's uh, get it hot. Success, managed to get the, the rear left off. Um, had my dad come over and basically help push down on the brake caliper so that I can basically beat this out into submission. It was pretty fun, it's pretty eventful, but yeah, like I said, got it out. Now it's a matter of putting in the new coilovers. So just gonna measure them up, get them the right way, but let's have a look at old versus new. I would say that's a nice, nice comparison. Um, the new ones already look roughly about the same height. Um, where they're already set, so it's not looking too bad. I'm gonna extend them out a little bit more, but then again, I might actually extend them out once the coilovers are already in and just really press on them to get them down because it was quite challenging to put the shock out earlier, so I got a feeling it's gonna be just as challenging to get the new ones in. I do think that it probably will be easier if you remove the rear drop links to get a little bit of leeway out of that, but these drop links are old, very, very old. They're gonna need to be cut out, I can already tell. I got new drop links already, but I'm not gonna do them today. Um, it's just not the right time for me. Um, therefore, I'm gonna 
power on and get through we've taken the rears out another good news update everyone we have well we i mean me i have managed to get the coilovers under the rear as well basically with regards to the rear fuel filler cap um yeah so you got the three bolts that hold it on through the other side so just over there so i think these are eight um nuts and that's a 12 mil bolt <sighs> it's quite complicated you really have to yank it this way um the lip on this kind of gets caught over here so you got to push it out this way and then you got to really just just work with it and eventually you get to the point where you can bend it like this and you can get to all the nuts and bolts the good thing about these coilovers is the fact that they are damper adjustable so i've kind of done it to the midway point um, i think it's 24 clicks either way kind of made it a little bit harder at first um, and then i'm gonna work our way back the one thing that would have been nice on these dampers is the little damper adjustable knobs that you can just slot in from the top i think that would have been great for this setup um, because when when you get this put back in it's going to be hard to reach there with just an allen key and stuff so that's what i would say would have been a nice addition the um the yellow speed ones that i've got on my sister's five series that comes with that so yeah this would have been a nice little addition it's not that expensive i guess from a company point of view but it would have made it a lot better for the owners right so yeah now it's just a matter of making sure both rear sides are the same height um i kind of made it shorter so that i could put the dampers in comfortably and now it's just a matter of bringing them all back down main thing to remember there is is just undo this one and work it from here all the way down but yeah let's uh, get these looking good Ladies and gentlemen, I am all finished up with the coilovers. Yes, it is a little bit higher at the back now. Um, as I mentioned previously, I am gonna look at raising the car up a little bit. Just makes life a little bit easier where I live because of all the speed bumps and stuff. One thing that I do want to point out, the, the nut for the damper on that side, that one was really loose. So when I was bouncing the car up, I could hear a knocking and as I checked it, I was like, wait a minute, I could see that knocking and stuff. That's definitely not good. So I had to tighten that up. It was basically coming off. But other than that, everything else has gone pretty smoothly. So now it's just a matter of putting the fuel filler um, back on. I'm not gonna put the rear trim on just yet. Um, just check everything over, make sure I can drive the car off. And take it out for a quick little test drive. The car is finally back on its own feet. Time to get everything on the roll um, like i said the front as well those bolts um, that was weak were loose on the rear is also the same here so i had to tighten those up not very good in the sense of quality control i would say so that is feedback i am going to provide to max eden rod um, but other than that really excited to get these out now and time to take it out for a good test drive so let's go ladies and gentlemen test drive I guess in some ways to put it with the coilovers and instantly I can tell a couple of things first off the rebound settings on this isn't as good as it should be um, which kind of yeah it, it, it is definitely higher up the car um, but the rebound there's something off with it so yeah it's maybe the preload needs to be changed the damper settings as well um, and even the ride height but yeah you can feel it just there like it just bounces a fair amount more now i am like the gopro is mounted to the windscreen at the moment but it does definitely feel a lot lot more lively at the back which isn't exactly a good thing in an s2000 so everyone that's a wrap to the video and i hope you all did enjoy it it was something different i tried to do the editing a bit differently for you all as well so give me some feedback am i doing a better job or am i not yeah it was a it was a pretty good actual experience for me working on the car because not that much went wrong for me things actually kind of went to plan what i will say is this with regards to the coilovers they are good especially for lowering your car they could go a hell of a lot lower than i've got them um I've actually got them pretty high on the s2000 i feel like the the front grip was really nice it was really good the rears there was just something not right there's something not right with either the preload or with regards to the the rebound on them it's there's just something off 
and like I said in the little bit of a drive it was just a little bit jittery at the rear afterwards and you know as soon as he hit a bump something just felt like as though he just wasn't happy so that's something that I've fed some feedback to um, Max Speeding Rods just to kind of get their point of view on it and also uh, my contact there Hazel has said we're looking to seeing what we can do about that and take it forward from there so if you are interested in their coilovers now they are extremely cheap i think for the s2000 it's something like 200 something pounds 230 let me check so they have a couple of kits for the s2000 one is for around 300 pounds and the other is like 300 and 320 i kind of feel like they could just do a little bit of a tweak and it will be perfect for the price range i've had budget coilovers and other cars before in fact uh, an E36 and my E30 actually I had budget coilovers on that and that wasn't too bad the thing you have to be realistic with is what are you after are you after the best track performance uh, ultimate handling or are you after some seriously nice low <laughs> and I think if you're after the second one if you just have a car that's nice and low but also still has decent feedback from the suspension and stuff then they're honestly not that bad and i think that's what people need to think about is what do i want from the car do i want it to just be low right now or do i want it to be low but also have all the other stuff going on the price difference is massive so that's something you should really think about and consider before making the purchase i also want to let you all know that you can use the link in the description below which will take you directly to the website and if you use the code as well you'll be able to get five percent off with your own purchase so it's great it's really good news and i hope that it makes getting these budget coilovers a little bit cheaper for you all because end of the day every little helps we'll leave it there for now i hope you all did enjoy this video if you did please make sure to smash the like button and also look at consider subscribing to the channel to see more content from me and all the car builds and everything else that i get up to for now i'll see you in the next one peace out bye and yeah if you want to then consider watching one of these two other videos that youtube are about to recommend